we showed mathematically that Joe Fourier's idea works. If you multiply by the nth harmonic and integrate, the only term in the infinite series that stays is where n equals n star. But if you're a visual learner, I want to show it to you graphically why this happens. So let me explain what this is. So here we have the infinite series, n equals 1, n equals 2, n equals 3, 4, 5, 6, etc. There's the harmonics right there, okay? This is the problem. We have an infinite number of these and a different infinite number of ANs that go in front, front of them. So we're going to show you graphically why Fourier's idea works if we multiply by the nth harmonic, n star equals 1, and integrate. Most of them go away. So that's what this is. Here is that series of infinite terms before we multiply it by n star equals 1. And here it is before we multiply it by n star equals 2. And we're going to see what happens to each one. Okay? So first let's do this. We're going to multiply each of these by the first harmonic, n star. And it looks like this one, so we're going to pull that one down. Okay? So now we have n equals 1 times n star equals 1. And if we multiply those two functions together, it just is a taller half of a sinusoid. So if you just think about it, that's pretty much what it would look like. It's all positive here, so the square of it is all positive. And if you integrate under the curve, you're going to get some value there in this sum. Okay? So that gives you some positive contribution. Now let's bring our n, equal, n star equals 1 over to n equals 2, a little n, or the series n equals 2. And now imagine multiplying these. Here they're both positive, so you get a positive value, everything's positive. And on this side, one's positive and one's negative, so you get a negative value. So you actually kind of get a, a symmetric thing like this, where it's positive on the left, negative on the right. And if you integrate it, you get zero, right? Because the integral of this thing, half is on top of the curve, half is below, half is positive, half is negative, zero contribution. Okay, let's bring n star over to here, n equals 3. Uh, so n star equals 1 times n equals 3, and you can see, uh, let's see, well this is positive and positive, so you get a positive bump there, but here you get a really big negative bump, because this is really big amplitude and that's really big positive amplitude, and then a small positive bump here, it kind of looks like that, okay? And it turns out mathematically that when you sum all that up, you get zero. Works out to be zero. Here, n star 1 times n equals 4, we're back to the symmetric case where this thing is seeing the same multiplication essentially as that thing, and it ends up looking like that. And you can see how symmetric that is if you integrate that plus, minus, plus, minus, zero contribution. And as you move along and painstakingly draw these in PowerPoint or plot them in MATLAB, you can see that you really are always going to get zero. So here it's small and it's getting bigger and bigger and smaller and smaller, but we have two medium sized peaks on the negative side and three on the positive. It's zero contribution. And we can do n, equal, n star equals 1, n equals 6, and that's symmetric again. Anyway, zero contribution. So from these graphs, we can see you only get a positive contribution to the integral for the term where n star was 1 and n was 1. And if you then move on to n star equals 2 and apply that to your series, we'll say the same thing. n star equals 2 looks like that there, so we'll bring that down. This times this function is going to look something like that. It's again going to be symmetric, therefore it's going to give zero contribution. Then we bring our n star equals 2 over here to n equals 2, and now we're just squaring a function. So when you square a function, everything is positive. You integrate under that where everything's positive, you get a positive contribution. All right? And then you bring n star equals 2 to n3, and if you think about what that looks like, it looks like that. It's getting kind of complicated, but you can see it's symmetric. It gives you 0 to the integral n star equals 2 times n equals 4 is nice and symmetric sine wave. Integral around that is 0. Uh, I drew this one. Let's see. n star equals 2 times n equals 5. Looks like some weird thing like that. And it gives you 0. And I did all this when I was really bored in a meeting. And the meeting ended, and I never did that one. Never got, never got back to it. I was sort of in the zone, and then it never happened. But you get the idea. That one would also give you 0. So this kind of shows you visually why it works. You get a positive contribution when n star equals n because that's the case where you're squaring something. And you never square something and get a negative number in the world of real numbers. And the fact that all the others give you zero, you can kind of see visually. So that's when we have functions like this, like the sine of the harmonics n1 times other harmonics n2. We say that's zero when n1 does not equal n2. We say those functions are orthogonal. So you may read later about orthogonal functions. This is kind of 
kind of what that means. So this is true when n1 does not equal n2. That's why I'm giving them separate designations. It has to be a different integer. When they're the same, that's what turns the Fourier series into a single term.